Oh, hi. Uh, welcome to I'll Tell You What's the Truth uh, on uh, Friday, uh, the 7th of August. Uh, as we begin today, you know, there's all kinds of interesting things on the internet. Folks are thinking up funny things and, and posting things. And, and uh, uh, one of my pals sent me one uh, with a number of, of uh, I guess, uh, a little bit of, uh, what, uh, a little bit of humor. And so I want to uh, pass a couple of them along. Hopefully it'll make you smile if it doesn't make you cry. Uh, first one is this. It was a sign that said, uh, people keep asking, is COVID-19 really that serious? Listen up. Casinos and churches are closed. When heaven and hell agree on the same thing, it's probably pretty serious. How about this one? On relationships. Single man with toilet paper seeks single woman with hand sanitizer for a good, clean fun. And I like this one on spiritual discipline. Had not planned on giving up this much for Lent. But my favorite was also on a church sign. It says this, prophecy class canceled due to unforeseen circumstances. Oh, well. Truth is, we've been at this for 20 weeks. So speaking about that guy who didn't want to give up this much for Lent. And uh, while we seem to know more than we did 20 weeks ago, uh, the overarching theme is still about uncertainty. And so as we talk about prayer, one of the questions that we might raise is, how do you pray in a time like this? How do you pray in a time when even the most devout of Christians and prayers wonder if it's going to make a difference? How do you pray in those times when you think, well, your prayers are just bouncing off the ceiling? Well, essentially, uh, as we talk about that today, I can just share some conclusions that have come to me entirely based on my own experience with a little help from scripture. Uh, back in my former life, you see, I uh, worked for a rather matter of fact, uh, plain speaking, uh, maybe a touch crusty old CPA. And uh, he was a no holds barred kind of guy. And I learned a great deal from him. But one of the things that stuck with me and has always stuck with me is he said, you know, no matter uh, what the circumstances are, and no matter how diligently and conscientiously you did the work, when you're finished, you always need to step back for a moment and look and ask yourself this one question. Does it make sense? You see, you have to be able to answer that question in the affirmative. And so as uh, I think about praying in circumstances like this, I ask uh, uh, that uh, that question, you see, because it is a difficult time to pray, and, and it's uh, we probably experience that more often than we care to admit. But the one thing that makes sense in times like this is this. Anyway, just pray anyway. You see, anyway, in the first place, it doesn't depend on me. It doesn't depend on how I feel. It doesn't depend on what I believe what I believe about my request or what I might believe about how it should be answered. You see, it's up to God. Just pray anyway. Just pray anyway because, well, when I pray, I'm aware of God's presence. And it helps me to know that my pal God is present. Some of you know that uh, I really don't like to be away from home at night by myself. Um, I just don't sleep as well. And I don't, you see, because, well, Kathy is not present. And I have learned over the years that her presence calms my spirit. The same is true for talking with my pal God. His presence calms my spirit. Just pray anyway. And of course, uh, that in turn leads to something else about prayer, you see? And that is this. Now, prayer does not change God. Prayer changes me. You see, that's, that helps. Each of us knows, no matter what set of circumstances we find ourselves in, our attitude, how we see it, 
my attitude, your attitude, has a powerful effect on how we respond and how we react and how we feel. You see, I can say like Paul did, I am convinced that better days are coming. I'm convinced of that because of something else Paul said. God is for me. You see, God is for you. And if God is for me and God is for you, who could be against us that would matter? And lastly, just pray anyway. Because you see, prayer gives you and it gives me the opportunity to see that the world is bigger than us and that the world is larger than our corner of it. It helps us to see the needs of others. And prayer helps us to commit ourselves to the words we pray. Now, some might say, well, wait a minute, what about the, uh, the robber hitting the road? And, well, so pray anyway, but how do you pray anyway? And I'm a little bit like Luther there. Uh, Luther always, whenever he asked a question of scripture, the first thing Luther said was, did Jesus say something about it? And Jesus did. The first thing Jesus said about prayer was when the disciples, remember that story? When the disciples said, Lord, teach us how to pray like John taught his disciples, right? How should we pray? Teach us, Lord, how should we pray? And you know what he said? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He taught the Lord's Prayer, didn't he? He sure did. And uh, so uh, I always begin with the Lord's Prayer, which was also a habit of Luther's. And uh, I, I like beginning with the Lord's Prayer, you see, because, well, it's older than Christianity. How about that? And it will always get you started. It always gets me started. And then... I'm aware of something else that Jesus said about prayer that we sometimes don't think about when we're thinking about prayer. Uh, but he said this in uh, that upper room discourse in John's gospel. And he said this, uh, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word. You see, there's Jesus in the upper room praying for you and me. You know what he's been doing since he ascended to heaven? Jesus has been praying for you and me. It's good to know. And then I have a favorite scripture passage that I like to use. And I like to read this passage. It's uh, from the Sermon on the Mount, the sixth chapter of Matthew. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body. What you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow brings worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. That passage has helped me through some challenging and trying times. And... My practice is to read it three times and just simply let it speak. Try to get quiet and let it speak. And all of that might cause us to pray something like this today. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And Lord, help me. Help us to be open, to listen, and to understand each and all of your children. Thank you, Lord, for the power and presence of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember, do the best you can. <sighs> Lean on God. Encourage one another. <laughs> Wear your mask. Better days are coming. Shalom.